today we're giving Tesla Fleet API a spin. Uh, so this is a new feature that Tesla introduced just recently, giving fleet owners a way to capture the car data that their fleet is producing and use it in any of the systems that they prefer. And we'll be seeing how the API works, how consent is given, and all the different ways that the API operates. In the first step, we'll be plugging in the car, start charging, and see how we can follow the updates. How it works? How fast is it? So we've been trying out the Tesla API for about last month, and we see that it keeps changing from, from week to week. So there's continuous improvements coming in from, from Tesla. First off, we find all the information really on the Tesla documentation site. The Tesla docs and uh, using a REST API uh, to retrieve the data. So that's a, a pull mechanism. And we basically get the latest available data from the vehicle. And it's also possible to really wake up the car to get the latest data from the vehicle, even if it would be sleeping. But currently it's charging. So it's pretty straightforward to get the uh, updates of the battery level. The Tesla API is built up with different packages. So currently we're using an evaluation package. That's the only package that currently exists. It has some limitations in how many API requests can be made every minute. Also how many data points can be accessed when using the streaming solution. And there will be a pricing introduced next year in 2024. We can perform one request. I don't know. To look, what was it? Discovery, one API car every five minutes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the current evaluation package, it comes in with one request per vehicle every five minutes. So we cannot get an update too frequently, but it's enough for an evaluation. And in the end, you can consider that for a paid plan, uh, it's possible to get data at a very high frequency. Yeah, in the beginning, we wanted to try out the, um, a specific part of the new Tesla Fleet API called Fleet Telemetry. And the Fleet Telemetry is a streaming approach, meaning that the data from the vehicle gets streamed directly to your servers, or in this case, our servers. And that's the way to really get the high frequency update. We have set up Fleet Telemetry on our own. We haven't got it to work yet, unfortunately. We've tried many different ways. Uh, we've also seen in the forums that we are not the only one who's struggling. So if you have figured out how to use Fleet Telemetry, how to get streaming data, it would be great to hear. And that's also why we're currently focusing more on the REST API. Right now I'm trying to see the list of data that we want to collect. Charge. It would be great to do this test during the summer, but somehow we always end up in a parking garage when it's really cold outside. We started from 37% and now we have uh, it at 46. We can use the data from this vehicle because it's already consented, but of course we wouldn't be able to fetch the vehicle data without getting the consent first uh, from the vehicle owner. That's what we want to look at next. How can a fleet owner give consent and have the data coming into a fleet management solution that they're using or into their own system to use the data for any type of purposes they want to. So what do you say, Mila, should we get a, get a coffee? Yeah. And we can, yeah, let's, uh, let's leave the car here, keep it charging and we go for a coffee and try out the consent flow. Yeah, so this is the, the screen that will show up to the, um, the, the fleet owner or the Tesla owner. They would sign in with their normal Tesla account. And as soon as the, uh, the, the vehicle owner clicks the link, they get to this screen. So it says allow high mobility access to your Tesla account. So it, it shows the, the company that's requesting for access and also what type of access that is being requested. So here we have for testing purposes selected uh, lots of different things like vehicle information, that's the live vehicle data. Also vehicle commands, we could lock and lock the door. Vehicle charging management. Also information about energy product information, that's basically an API to even manage the subscriptions of the Tesla and the Tesla account. Um, and in the end it's possible for the, uh, for the vehicle owner to really choose exactly what info they want to share. If you go now ahead and click allow, that is then generating an access token that we capture on our side uh, based on JWT. And once we have this access token, we can go ahead and start using the endpoint. So fetching all the vehicles in, the, in that account. So here we have one, uh, one car. But if 
uh, if the fleet has, for instance, uh, even thousands of vehicles, that consent would give access to all of those vehicles, so not only to one single car. Next, we can go in and, and fetch the data and get all the data for, for that we are allowed to access for that vehicle. Uh, and this is also the same endpoint that we were already using in the parking garage when fetching the charging information. We have here a list of the different endpoints. So uh, listing vehicles we already did. We can see uh, the vehicle data, service data, recent alerts, warranty details, and there are also some remote commands like wake up, door unlock, uh, door lock, and there's actually dozens of these type of uh, remote commands, but we will be trying out the unlock commands uh, as we finished in the cafe. Now we're getting ready to head out and do a small drive and also update the location data of the vehicle uh, and other data we can get. Oops. Didn't have to pay. We'll do a short drive uh, and get to the next, uh, next location and see also if we get the, uh, any updates during the drive. So we're fetching data right now every one minute. We're trying to, but um, with the rate limit of every five minutes, we'll get new, new data basically every five minutes. That's the expectation. We should see the mileage, charging data, location data all change. And we have the API request running in the background. There have been, of course, different ways that Tesla APIs and data has been used up to this point. And, um, um, it's not surprising, of course, the Teslas have been connected since, since the beginning. You always had a Tesla app, just the same way as you've had a BMW connected app uh, as well. And ever since, there have always been open source projects where these apps have basically been reverse engineered. So software developers take that app into parts and see how that application is getting that data and then using the same methods, it's also possible to get data, of course. Obviously, it's an unofficial way of doing it, and it also requires, um, it requires you to get the username and password from the vehicle owner in order to use the API in that way. So you can also present yourself as the official app to the uh, Tesla service, for instance. Now, within, through this official workflow, the consent, as we've shown, is done completely differently. So there is an standardized consent journey. It also shows uh, the fleet owner who is accessing the data and for what purposes, and not putting the vehicle owners in a bad position in handing out the credentials, which of course for any uh, internet account is, is considered really, really unsafe. Here we can see, we have now collected the, the, the data we received uh, through the Tesla API one, uh, while we were driving. And we plotted the location updates in, onto uh, this simple uh, map editor. So on the right hand side, we have the uh, latitude and longitude uh, from the, the trip. It was a short one. It took around seven to eight minutes for us to drive here. And on the right hand side, we can see uh, the uh, pins on the map. So we started at the bottom of the screen and then we were driving up uh, along the river, the Spree River in Berlin, up to where we are now on, on the very top of the screen um, at the square. So we did get uh, approximately nine, nine, ten location updates during this drive. Um, although the update frequency was limited to once every five minutes, it seems like we were able to get uh, more data more frequently. So probably this is not enforced 100% at this stage for this evaluation package uh, but in any case we were confident that the vehicle is updating the location much frequently and then it's just a matter of uh, any type of api limitations that might be uh, enforced by by tesla when the api is used to get the lo location data you, we need to specifically mention location data in the in the your in the query and when we ask you will see a pop-up in the car to show that this the the location has been used by a third party App. Now as the next step, we want to use some of the remote commands, so locking and unlocking the vehicle as an example. So after the consent is given through the OAuth flow, in order to put the key in the car to be able to do write commands, we need to 
visit the, the tesla.com and this is specific URL that we registered with Tesla. You get a QR code and you you have to have your application, Tesla application open here. It pops up the application and asks you if you want to allow this third party to access your vehicle. And I can approve it. And it's successfully there and as you see as well it goes directly to the lock section of your car as well. So you can also manage it from the car in directly. And I will give a, give a try with uh, uh, unlocking the doors using the API. So pretty fast, so it took around uh, I guess even one, two seconds. You can also try locking the vehicle again. Now. Hit send, yeah. Lock again. So it's a simple function, but of course the uh, lock and lock uh, is, is great for uh, rental use cases. So remotely unlocking the doors uh, and uh, also locking it in the end uh, through any type of fleet management solution. It's again a fully a full car rental service or car sharing service, for instance, without the need of any additional hardware in the car, which is has been used most most often until the until this point. Yeah, that's uh, lock and lock. So there we have it. We are now tested the fleet. API from Tesla, it's working, it's easy to use. Uh, it has consent capturing from the fleet owner built in. Uh, we can use the REST API to fetch data, which is what we've done today. We get the uh, updates from the vehicle very fast. Uh, remote commands, locking the doors, unlocking the doors also uh, works very fast. And in the end, the only thing we couldn't test today was the uh, fleet telemetry part of it, which is the streaming data directly from the vehicle as they happen. Uh, but we'll surely get around to that also in the next phase uh, as we run out of technical difficulties there. If you're interested in trying out the fleet API from Tesla, you can do it via us, via High Mobility. We are specializing in integrating the different technical platforms of all the different brands. So you have Tesla and 20 plus other brands available for one single unified uh, API and that you can find more information about on our website. Hope you find it interesting to get an insight into Tesla fleet API and how that works and see you in the next one.